Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting all new show in store for you this week. Jordan's gonna take us on a beautiful trip chasing after salmon on both the Pier Marquette and the Manistee Rivers. You won't wanna miss that story. And Jimmy's got some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. I was recently able to get down to the Lansing area and spend some time with a fairly new gun manufacturer there. You won't want to miss that. And then we're going to take one of those rifles out on the early antlerless season. Had some success there as well. And we're going to have what probably is our last big lake fishing trip of the year. Met some new friends out of the port of Ludington just a week or two back. Had a good time. Lots of good stories on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees, the sweet smell of nature's in the air, from the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream, it's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by, by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988, offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. Here on the PM, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe so, it's the largest undammed river in the state. So there's no dams connected to this river. Uh, it's all free, free flowing, uh, which is sweet. And we also have uh, no salmon stocking on this river. There's no, no stocking of salmon or steelhead here, just brown trout. Uh, so it works really well because we have no dams. Those salmon and steelhead can push way up the feeder creeks and different branches of the PM to spawn. Uh, so year after year, we get a consistent uh, natural run of fish, which is really cool. Uh, we're down here in the lower river right now uh, before it really starts braiding off into its different branches. Early in the year, there are two main techniques used when targeting salmon. And today, we were trying them both. So right now we're kind of doing thunder sticking and skein fishing, uh, or float fishing I should say. Basically I like using a heavier gram bobber here. I've got a 22 grammer there. I believe this is half ounce of uh, half ounce swivel here that's got some lead attached to it. So that I attach directly to my main line. 
here I've get, just got, I don't know, 18 inches, two feet of uh, 15 pound fluoro. Got snelled to a two out hook there. And I leave a loop that that snell knot will cinch down on so I can take a big goober of skein here. I'll throw it in that loop. Clinch that snell knot forward on that hook eye. I'll drop my weight down. I'll kind of double the skein back to make sure it's hooked on that hook. And I got a nice goober of skein. Skein is a little bit better for those holding fish that are kind of sitting stale in a hole. Uh, the thunder sticks I've found to be kind of, when those fish are pushing, uh, they really, some of them will peel off and crush that thunder stick. Even when they're holding in holes, they'll still crush that thunder stick. But the skein is definitely very important for those holding fish. So right now we're set up on a hole here. Uh, we're seeing some fish blow past us here. Uh, we hooked one already on a thunder stick, but now that we know there's fish in this hole, we're going to try and see if any of them want to eat skein real quick before we go back to the thunder stick. Nice, yep, keep them out of that wood. Yeah, buddy. We made the first jump. I think he, he spit it out of his mouth and we got him in the side, yeah. Because so we had a good handle on him at first. Whew. All right. Although we only landed one salmon on the Pier Marquette, it was still a fun night on the river. After a short drive and a few hours of sleep, we were back at it the next morning, this time on the Manistee River. Now we're on the Manistee River, uh, kind of the midsection of it, chasing some fish again that are kind of holding up here. Uh, the Manistee, we don't have, there's a tippy dam obviously that blocks the fish from getting up into the upper reaches. So we only have about, I want to say 35, 40 miles uh, to Lake Michigan. So those fish are right now coming up. They're starting to hold in some of the deeper holes as they move throughout the river and we've got fish pushing up as well. Uh, so we're out here bright and early this morning, hoping to get some fish on the thunder stick at first light. <laughs> no way. Unreal. Take some skill. Thank you. Thank you. That was on the second cast. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yep. That's a brown trout. I think. Shut. I will, Dylan, better. Oh, no way. No way. Oh, that's okay. Oh! Change your hooks on your Thunderstick Juniors. If they've got the old style hooks, these brown ones, do yourself a favor right away, change them out. Don't make that mistake. As the sun crept above the trees, two things became apparent. It was going to be an absolutely beautiful morning to be on the river, and cold water means everything early in the year. Yeah, so right now we're kind of fishing uh, a creek mouth here. So we've got, looks like the majority of them are gonna be coho salmon, uh, but there is some kings that we've seen sprinkled in the mix. So you've got th just this tiny creek that's just pouring out cold water. I know, I haven't checked the gauge yet this morning, but I know just by dipping my hands in, that water temp is definitely warm right now. I would say probably 70 degrees, 71 degrees if I had to guess. So that creek's probably dumping out somewhere in the low 60s, high 50s water temp, and those fish just are trying to catch a break from that warm water. So they're 
kind of just swimming up to it, taking a little bit of a break sitting in that cold water. Uh, and hopefully we can get one that it's had enough of the cold water and it's turning to continue its journey upstream and it's ready to smash the thunder stick. We fished that pot of salmon for a little over two hours and never did have any luck. The fish were there, they just didn't want to bite. So we moved on and eventually found another pot of fish further upriver. So it's been pretty slow today. I mean, we're dealing with a high pressure system. Uh, it's bright and sunny, not a cloud in the sky and the water temp is just climbing in temperature. So we've got a cold creek mouth here. I can see uh, kind of a swarm of fish just sitting out above, below this creek mouth right now. These fish are just sitting there, soaking in the cold water. Hopefully we can get some to bite in this colder water. Got him. Sweet. We have a little coho. Well, that little coho would turn out to be the last fish of the day. There's no doubt there was plenty of salmon around, but some days they just don't want to bite. Special thanks to Dylan and the crew for showing me around a couple of the more popular salmon fishing rivers here in West Michigan. One of the seasons here in Michigan that I really haven't taken advantage of is the early antlerless season here in the state of Michigan. Well, I was able to kind of fix that for this year, and along the way I got to spend some time with a fairly new gun manufacturer right here in our great state. We as Michiganders are pretty fortunate. We have bow manufacturers, broadhead companies, lots of lure companies, and when I heard about a fairly new gun manufacturer in the Lansing area, well, I had to stop in and see just how they got started. As most of you know, the laws in the hunting laws in Michigan changed in 2014 to where we could hunt in the shotgun zone with a straight wild pistol cartridge. Uh, at that time, it was only the 450 Bushmaster, so we just wanted to go hunting. In 2014, we all set out to do that with our rifle A or rifle B. Neither one of them would reliably work, and the internet just blew up with everybody's experiences the same as ours, and we could see what the issues were. One didn't want to feed, one didn't want to eject, and my manufacturing background uh, just made the issue apparent to me. And so when 2015 season came around, we were making upper receivers uh, that would just bolt on anybody else's lower in the 450 Bushmaster. Uh, that went well. We got a lot of uh, customer interest to make the whole rifle. So by 2016, we were making the lower as well. You know, so from, from 2016 on, we had full rifles. With a real interest in the Hunter, these guns come in a variety of calibers, and I was interested to learn just a little bit more about the different varieties of rifles that they carry. All right, Jimmy, we've got two different families of rifles. We've got the Pursuit Series and the Limited Series. We'll start out with our 22-inch Pursuit Tracker. The Pursuit Tracker has a 22-inch barrel. They are all black nitride for protection. Everything comes threaded for suppressor use. On the Pursuit Series, we run all nickel boron coated components. You also see here on our charge handle, we've got some little fins on top. It's a gas deflector, so when you're running suppression, you don't get as much gas in the face. We've got an oversized takedown pin and a larger mag release button, so that when you're out there with gloved hands, you can make sure you get on the components necessary. Then we're gonna jump over to the 18 inch Scout, still part of the Pursuit Series, same great features. And all of our rifles come with a bipod mount and a tripod mount. These do have QD holes built into them for sling use. So when you're going out hunting, you can sling them over your chest, ready to go. And then the other family of rifles is our limited series. This is our guide rifle. You'll see that it has black nitrate coated components inside. And then it's a four and a half pound mag, or a four and a half pound mil spec trigger. These guns are very different than other AR platform guns that I've seen. The black guns that most of us know were kind of the starting point for the guns these guys are making today. This is the black rifle section. This is all any of us knew in 2014. Uh, 
mm, I won't call them military, but paramilitary features, uh, flash hiders, muzzle brakes, uh, forward assist, um, collapsible stocks, uh, super lightweight pencil barrels, black. But, but this is where it started. And we have, you know, this is other, there's some very expensive rifles here. We, we're all about quality. And we look at that and we take the good and we integrate it into the hunting. Into the hunting. And with the hunter in mind, it only seemed right to take these to the field. So here in Lapeer County, a couple days later, at one of the coolest pole barns I've ever seen, I hooked up with Skeeter Breckman on the early antlerless hunt to see if we could find a doe for both of us. We had his 350 Legend ready to go as we hit the woods this beautiful fall morning. started moving through the corn just after first light. We had some nice does in front of us, but also had a few of them that still had fawns with them. So we waited for a lone doe without fawns to give us a good look. Well, our setup had worked out just perfect, and the 350 Legend, well, it found its mark. We still had some deer around us, so we slowly and quietly started to make our switch. I moved over to the gun, Skeeter moved over to the camera, and sure enough, looked like the double we had hoped for, well, it might just work out. exactly what we planned on. There's lots of deer on this property. We were able to be selective. Um, yeah, we found the right two antlerless to start the uh, Michigan season off right. That's right. Well, thanks for letting me uh, take part. Oh, thank you very much for coming out. and Glad you were able to take one with this rifle. Yeah. Well, both shots were perfect, and we were able to get both deer and started the work of getting them cleaned and on some ice as soon as possible. It was a great way to start the season with a deer in the truck and headed to the freezer. Just like uptown. Yeah, <laughs> exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> we will see how the deer season unfolds, but with some fresh back straps already, well, things are looking good here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, if you are a deer hunter here in the state of Michigan, some things are changing this year. We now have a mandatory check-in to register your deer, whether that's a buck or doe, no matter what season you're in. Now, I had taken a deer on that early antlers, so I was actually able to kind of go through this process, and there's really two ways you can do it. Uh, this new mandatory check-in you can either do online, you can go to the DNR's website, uh, click on hunting, and then you can go right there. There's going to be a big banner about how you register your deer. It's pretty easy. You can just walk yourself through that. If you're going to do it online, you have 72 hours to complete this process from when you harvest the deer. If you're going to do it online, you're going to need your tag, so you can put the number in for that, uh, some information about yourself, some information about the deer, where it was taken, some of that. There'll be a map on there where you can actually, uh, you know, 
drag the cursor to you know your rough estimate of where you were and kind of what county you were in. It'll ask you some of that information. So you can do that online. What I did was I downloaded the DNR's app, and I have to say that the DNR app is very easy to use. Once you get your uh, all your information in there, all your licenses are there, and I just literally clicked on uh, the tag I was filling filled out the information, put where I was at, and it kind of walks you through that, so it's pretty easy. So you can either do it online or you can do it through the app, and you can have somebody help you with that, and if you're out there and you don't even know what an app is, you can talk to your kid or grandkid, and they can help you out to get that set up on your phone, or you can, again, you can do it online. It's a pretty easy process, and uh, some people are not really thrilled about having to kind of pinpoint your location. I did the best guess I could because I shot it in a different county, and I filled it out the next day, so I kind of dragged a little pin as close as I could you know, figure out to where we are, and the reason the DNR is doing that is to get some better information on harvest reports and kind of where things are at and and hopefully it'll help in management of our deer herd here in the state of michigan it's really a pretty easy process and i think once you go through it a time or two uh, it'll be no problem for all of you out there so good luck in the woods and hopefully you'll be able to fill some of those tags and also one thing you should know when i took my deer to the processor they did ask for the uh, confirmation number that comes if you do it online they'll email it to you and if you do it through the app it's right there on your phone uh, but that is something that you're going to need when you get your deer to a processor what we're going to do right now is kind of show you one of our last big lake fishing trips of the year. Things started pretty early a week or so back. Before sunrise, we had a few fish already in the boat. Well, we are a little bit deeper today, September, so the big boys have all gone basically up the river. We just put a nice three-year-old in the boat there, and uh, still trying to find temp. A little bouncy out here, as you can tell, and uh, just trying to see if we get some cold. There's been a lot of nice cold that's been around lately, so going after those guys today. And uh, now that the fish are in the river, how does that change what you're doing out here? Um, well, the pattern is basically gone to more spoons and rotators and such out here, and a little bit deeper, a little more offshore. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, wind from the south and big uh, water, so the temperatures down there I mean we're in 206 foot, and that fish just came at 110, so definitely going a little bit deeper, and it's all spoons. Okay. And tell me about our crew back there on the deck with these two guys. Who's fishing with today? <laughs> well, we've got my mate Bo, which uh, you know from, uh, I've had him since a pup and everything, and then we've also got Justin Plamondon from Clocked Out. Uh, one of the youngest charter captains on the Great Lakes. Uh, they're actually two of the best deckhands on the lakes. So kind of neat to see the second generation coming up. It is cool to see some young guys becoming charter fishermen. And it's also worth noting that a lot of the gear that these guys use is made right here in Michigan. Well, it's kind of interesting because it's all Michi most of it's Michigan made. That fish we just caught on was a moonshine spoon out of the UP. Uh, we've got the boards and the other spoons and rotators and flies are made by Dreamweaver right here in Ludington. And the guys are actually wearing GLG, which is made here in Ludington as well. So we got a nice Michigan-based uh, gear. Nice. Well, give us a synopsis of our day so far. Well, so far, Jimmy's happy because we've now going with the waves. <laughs> he said uh, going into the waves was a little bouncy. Uh, so far, they're perfect. They're four for four, so hopefully I don't jinx them. And uh, the mates have not gotten sick, and the guys haven't gotten sick, and you haven't got, you and I haven't gotten sick, so it's a good day. So any day on the lake is better than being at work, I'd say. There you go. So tell me how you ended up on the boat here today. Well, uh, I seen a post, uh, Michigan Outdoors shared, win a fishing trip in Michigan Outdoors, just send in your uh, favorite summertime activity or a photo of it, and uh, send a picture of my boat. And next day I get a, call, uh, a message from them saying, congratulations, you're the winner. So, nice. yeah, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so, I really, uh, really appreciate it. Awesome. And who'd you bring with you? I uh, brought my father, Lou. Hello. Oh, nice. Yep. Did he, did he get you into fishing? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we've been, I mean, fishing since I could remember. Um, been, uh, well, I'm 39, so it's been a while. It's been a while, so it's it's fun. This is this is definitely a different style of fishing than uh, what we typically do. Yeah, where's home um, for you? Home's Macomb, um, Richmond, and uh, Lake St. Clair is pretty much home lake, so a lot of walleye. Okay. Uh, also on board with us today was Steve Stoutenberg from Greenstone Farm Credit, who helped us run the Facebook competition that got us all here today. 
you know, I was lucky enough to, uh, we, we did the drawing and these guys got to come along and uh, there was a few other loan officers that couldn't make it, so they asked me and I, I was not going to turn that down. <laughs> and what does a loan officer do? So we service loans to, I do mostly farms, but we do construction loans, we do vacant land loans, hunting property, um, you name it, we do it all. Well, we were not finding many big fish today, but just enough to keep our interest up. Now, one of the things that amazes me is just how these guys can typically run 12 to 15 rods and not get tangled. But I tell you what, when they do get tangled, it's kind of fun to poke fun at them for sure. Now, Bo, what do you call this technique here? Uh, this is called fishing with multiple lines. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, I gotta go over you. This is something that you don't try this at home. This is called bow fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the boys did finally get those lines straightened out, and we headed to the docks. Most of the big fish were in the river or headed that way, but we had a few nice fish, and everyone had a great day. Of course, come to find out, the day after we fished, they caught 15 with some real big ones in the mix. So like most fishing trips, you should have been here yesterday, or you should have been here tomorrow. But we had a good day. We got some good fillets, met some new friends. It was a perfect day on the water. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in upcoming weeks. There's all sorts of exciting things headed your way on the show here this fall. We'll take you out for some more fall fishing, some water fouling, and of course we'll show you what happened out in the woods for opening day of archery season. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you can be checking us out. And good luck to all of you bow hunters that are going to be in the woods this weekend. Hopefully you get some back straps for the freezer. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine tree. I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, East to Monroe To St. Marie and back again